In section 3.3, you will graph systems of linear inequalities. When we graph a system of linear in in inequalities, the solution is going to be the uh, shaded regions in common. So we're looking for an overlap. Let's start with example two here. Remember when we graph inequalities in the coordinate plane, it's two steps. The first step is to graph the boundary. So we'll replace the inequality with the equal sign. So for this first inequality, we're graphing the boundary y equals 2. Well, we know that's a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 2. I want to graph it broken since equals is not part of the inequality. And now I need to check for shading in our second step for graphing an inequality. I can use the origin since the boundary does not go through the origin. That means I'm putting 0 in for y. Is 0 less than 2? That's true. So where the origin is, it's true, and the other side is false. So we're shading the half plane down from that horizontal broken line. Okay, and now we go through the same two steps with our second inequality in this system. And we graph the boundary first, y equals the absolute value of x minus 1. Now, I, this is an absolute value equation, so I know it's going to be a v-shape. And I'm going to put that vertex in a table of values. The vertex is 1, 0. Our h value is 1, and our k value is 0. So I'll graph 1, 0. This v-shape is going to open up because our a value is positive. So I'll choose values. Let's choose negative 1 and 3 to add to our table of values for x. When I put negative 1 into the equation, I'm taking the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And when I put 3 in for x, I get 3 minus 1, 2. The absolute value of 2 is also 2. So I'm graphing negative 1, 2. And I'm graphing 3, 2. And now I want to draw a solid v-shape because equals is part of the inequality. Okay, now I'll check for shading. So I'll use the origin since it's outside of the V shape. And I'll put 0 in for Y. And I'll put 0 in for X. And simplify. But the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And 0 is not greater than or equal to 1. 0 is less than 1. So this is a false statement. And so where the origin is, it's false. Inside is true, so I'm shading inside this solid V shape. So now you can see the overlap is this triangular region that I've shaded in. It includes the solid part of the V shape, but not the broken part of the horizontal line. It's a bounded region. Okay, in this system, we're graphing four inequalities in the same coordinate plane. And we're going to go through all of those same steps. We're going to graph the boundary. x equals negative 2. Now that's a vertical line that crosses the, the x-axis at negative 2. It's solid because equals is part of the inequality. And when I check for shading using the origin, I'm going to put 0 in for x. So I have 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. And that's true. 0 is bigger than any negative. So where the origin is, it's true. The other side is false. And I'm shading to the right of that vertical line. OK, and now I'll graph the second boundary, which is x equals 10. That's a vertical line that crosses the x-axis at 10. And it's also solid, because equals is part of the inequality. Checking for shading using the origin. I'll put 0 in for x again. Is 0 less than or equal to 10? That's also true. <coughs> so I'll shade towards the origin. And you can see that the overlap 
right now <clears throat> is between these two vertical lines. But we have two more inequalities to put on this coordinate plane. So graphing the next boundary, it's 3x plus 2y equals 6. Now since my coefficients 3 and 2 divide evenly into that constant term 6, I'm going to use x and y intercepts. So when I let x equals 0, I'm left with 2y equals 6, so I know y equals 3. And when I let y equals 0, I'm left with 3x equals 6, so I know x equals 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So my y-intercept is 3, my x-intercept is 2, and now when I draw this line, I want to draw a broken line since equals is not part of the inequality. And I'll check for shading using the origin, which is below that slanted broken line. And I'll put 0 in for x and 0 in for y. Is 0 less than 6? That's true again. So towards the origin is where I'm shading. The other side is false. So we're shading down. <clears throat> and we have one more boundary to graph. And that boundary is 6x plus 4y equals negative 12. Again, I'm going to use x and y intercepts. And when I let x equals 0, I'm left with 4y equals negative 12, so y is equal to negative 3. When I let y equals 0, I'm left with 6x equals negative 12, so I know x is equal to negative 2. So now I'm going to graph negative 3 uh, for a y-intercept, and I'm going to graph negative 2 for an x-intercept. And again, I'm going to draw a broken line since equals is not part of the inequality. And I'll check for shading using the origin, which is above that broken line. Putting 0 in for x and 0 in for y. I have 0 is greater than negative 12, which is true. So I'm shading up towards the origin. The other side is false. And when I do, I can see that my overlap is between the vertical lines, but also between the, between the broken slanted lines. So I'll just shade that solution to this system in. You can see it's going to be another bounded region because when I get down here close to that vertical line, we're going to stop at that vertical line. Okay, another bounded solution. Okay, in this example, we're going to go the other direction. We're going to write a system of linear inequalities for the shaded region. So to do that, I'm going to write boundary uh, lines that for those vertical sides on this quadrilateral. I know that on the left, it's x equals negative 2. I also know that it's going to be x is greater than negative 2 because we're shading to the right. On the other side, we have x equals positive 2, and I'm going to be shading to the left, so I'll write my inequality as x is less than or equal to 2. Okay, now I have two slanted lines along the top and bottom of this quadrilateral. Okay, the, <coughs> the slanted line along the top has a slope of, if I go from one point to the other, it has a rise of two units and a run of four. 
a rise of 2 and a run of 4 simplified would give me a slope of 1 half. And now I can see where it crosses the y-axis also at 3, right between those two points, so I have a, a y-intercept of 3. So I can write the equation y equals 1 half x plus 3. And now I have to decide on the inequality. Since it's shaded downward, I'm going to assume that it's going to be y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. But I'm going to check using the origin to make sure that I have my shading correct. So I should get a true statement here because the origin is shaded. So when I put 0 in for x and y, I have 0 is less than or equal to 3, which is true. So the shading is correct. So y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. I'm going to add to my system. And then I'm going to take care of that bottom line. The slope of the bottom boundary to this uh, region has a, a slope of down 2 and to the right 4. So it looks like negative 2 over positive 4 which simplifies to negative one-half. Okay, and the y-intercept is equal to negative three. So I can write this equation, y equals negative one-half x minus three. And again, I'm going to guess that it's y is greater than or equal to negative one-half because we're shading up from that uh, boundary. And I'll check using the origin. And again, the origin should make this inequality true. So I'll put 0 in for y, 0 in for x. And simplifying, I get 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. True, 0 any negative. So we've got 